Welcome back, fellow journeyers. In this episode, we're focusing on an essential aspect of your psilocybin journey, how to navigate safely and prevent the occurrence of a bad trip. A bad trip can be challenging, but with the right knowledge and strategies, you can minimize the risks and maximize the potential for a positive and impactful experience with psilocybin mushrooms. Understanding the nature of a bad trip. Well, before we delve into prevention, it's crucial to understand what a bad trip entails. A bad trip can manifest as overwhelming fear, anxiety, paranoia, or emotional distress during a psychedelic experience. It can be distressing and disorienting, but it's essential to remember that it's a part of the spectrum of experiences and, and it can often contain valuable lessons. If you do find yourself navigating through challenging territory, it is important to let yourself feel the entire experience because we want to allow the energy of the whole experience to move through our body without labeling it and by observing it neutrally as much as possible. All of my guidance is designed to help you create an experience where you can go to the depths of the darkness of your own soul and back again and repattern your nervous system to be a wide space of acceptance and love for all parts of you. The aim is to create an environment where you can feel scared and unsafe emotionally and process your fears whilst actually knowing that you are safe. You may have read about individuals experiencing PTSD from a psychedelic journey or having a hard time getting back into their bodies and stuck in a dissociative state. The primary advice I can give you is this. Follow the guidelines I've given you and the strategies I will share with you in this episode. Have a facilitator present for your trip. Don't work with psilocybin or psychedelic medicine if you have an absolute contraindication. Don't ever work with any facilitator or trip sitter who you don't feel safe and comfortable with. And this isn't a judgment of that person. This is about you and your inner experience of this person. This might sound drastic, but a good way to understand and measure how you feel with someone is, how would I feel if this person was responsible for my life? Would I trust them to take care of me? It is very, very unlikely that your life will ever be in danger, but you may believe that it is, especially if you're taking a large dose of psilocybin and are confronted by all of your illusions of safety falling away whilst facing a lot of fear. It can feel like you're dying, and that's where your brain can go to. And on some level, it's true. Old parts of you are dying and being let go of so that you can be free of them. It's what's referred to as an ego death. And if you compound that with some of the physical sensations you can experience whilst on psychedelics, it can really feel like you're dying at very high doses. And if the person who is supposed to be supporting you in that moment of truth is someone that on some level you don't trust completely to take care of you, then it is likely that the lack of trust even if it is small, will exacerbate your distress or not allow your body to settle enough to have the experience pass through smoothly. Now, a bad trip is often just the things we want to avoid coming into our experience. I invite you to take one minute right now. You can pause this podcast and make a list of all the things that would make a trip bad for you. So I'm going to pause right here. Okay, now cross out the words bad trip and instead write bad day. Yes. Or you could also write bad week, bad month, bad life, etc., etc. The same conditions you have for a bad trip are likely the same conditions you have for a bad day. Not definitely, but likely. And if these conditions are met, you label your experience and you may even reject or resist it. It's that old adage of, you know, throwing away an entire day just because X, Y, Z happened. And understanding this is where the magic lies. When we judge and label our trip or our journey, 
and also our experience of life, we limit our ability to experience everything that is available and being gifted to us. Have you ever had a time in your life before where you've gone through something difficult, labeled it as a bad experience, and then later, with the gift of hindsight, you can look back and see that you needed that experience, that person and that pain to help you grow into the person you are today. The same experiences you want to avoid in your life is what you want to avoid in your trip. And it's often those very things that you must experience in order to let go of them. One of my mentors, Preston says, what you resist persists. Everything is just an experience. And your emotions, whether it be anxiety, fear, paranoia, or something else, is just an emotional experience. You've got to experience the breakdown to experience the breakthrough. The context you hold for your trip and for life defines the way that you experience it. I like to hold the context of everything is unfolding as it's meant to, always for my highest good. Everything is here to bring me back to love, to truth, to trust, Everything is here to support me in coming into deeper harmony with nature, my nature, our nature, the nature. And in order for me to be in harmony, I must become aware of where I am in disharmony so that it can be let go. It's impossible to avoid nature. It's impossible to avoid the seasons and cycles of life. A tree standing in the middle of the woods goes through a summer, gets drier. It then goes through a fall and autumn. It starts to lose its leaves. And then in a winter, it's getting battered by heavy winds, heavy rain, storms, and also water that help it to grow. And then it goes into spring and everything starts to bloom again. It starts to grow, regenerate, and it's taller this season than it was the last one. Its leaves are growing greener and greater than the one before. Its impurities have been let go. Is the tree complaining about the fall and the autumn when its leaves fall off? No, it's allowing it to be. And We are a part of nature. We are like the tree. We go through our own seasons and cycles. And the more that you can understand that and allow the seasons to be what they are, this too shall pass. Then you will come into a state of harmony and you will experience a state of peace. My sister, beautiful sister, Jess, she came to one of my retreats and during a journey while she was experiencing some physical and emotional discomfort, she shared with me that she doesn't like the way the mushrooms make her feel. And I shared with her that the exact reason she was saying she doesn't like them is the exact reason I love mushrooms. I've already shared with you about what my life was like before I started working with mushrooms. All of my unresolved traumas, addictive tendencies, and ineffective behavior patterns that were playing out in my life were a result of me holding on to emotions and not letting love in, or rather not even knowing how. My life was all a manifestation of my unresolved fears and the parts of me that I believed I wasn't worthy of love of worthy of having loving relationships and everything else that I deeply desired and craved in my life. Working with psilocybin has given me access to a tool, a medicine that I can sit with and consciously choose to dive in and face all of these things. And sometimes it definitely is not easy. Sometimes it's been really fucking hard and yet the reward is always worth it. Without conscious intervention, we will always continue to manifest a life from our conditioned limitations, fears, and ineffective attempts to meet 
our need for love through the illusion of external approval, safety, or attempting to control. Jess made her peace with the medicine and now has a mushroom tattoo on her forearm. (laughs) Shout out to Jess. I love you. Thank you for letting me share this little story. With all of that being said, there still exists the reality of experiencing a challenging experience. And here is what you can do to support yourself through it. Setting the stage for a positive journey. The first line of defense against a bad trip is your context and preparation. Here's how to set the stage for a smoother journey. Firstly, choose the right set and setting. We've already discussed the importance of setting and mindset in previous episodes. Ensuring you're in a comfortable, safe environment and in a clear mental and heart state is the foundation for a positive journey. Second is dosage. Be mindful of the dosage that you decide to take. Understand what mushrooms you're taking and the typical potency of these mushrooms. Start with a small to moderate amount and avoid high doses if you're inexperienced. It's easier to navigate the experience at lower doses. Third is intention. Setting a clear and positive intention can serve as a guiding light during the journey. Your intention can help you stay focused and aligned. So how do we prevent a bad trip? Well, the fundamentals that you need to understand have already been spoken about. Set, setting, and environment. Follow the notes and checklists that I've shared on our website. Now let's explore 10 strategies for supporting yourself if you encounter a challenging experience. Firstly, always come back to your breath. Breathe in for four, in through the nose, and out for four through the mouth. Notice your breath, feeling your lungs and your belly. Put a hand on your heart and you can help your heart rate slow down and relax. You could also ground yourself by touching your body, by moving and by breathing. Just helping by touching a body can really ground you into your body. You could also change your environment if needed. You can move from indoors to outdoors, get your bare feet on the grass or in connection with the earth. You could get some sun on your body, open some blinds or put on some nice warm lighting, change the music, burn some Palo Santo or sage, smell grounding essential oils like lavender or peppermint. Maybe do you need someone to leave the environment? You could ask them. You could open a window and let some fresh air in, move from outdoors to indoors. And I really encourage you to let your body do the talking. Sometimes our body needs to move into a specific position like Uh, the fetal position, or it just different from what we're in in the present moment to allow energy to move and flow from us. This could look like moving from laying down to standing up or sitting down to dancing to laying in the fetal position or getting up, moving your body around in whatever way, going for a walk, jogging, hopping on the spot just to help your body move some energy. Another strategy to help you through a challenging experience is to hydrate with some water, cold pressed juice or herbal tea. You could have a shower or a bath. You could also remember your intention and come back to that. Repeat it out loud to yourself if you need. Your intention is your why. It's the guiding North Star to help you navigate this experience. Remember your context. This is all happening for you, even when you can't currently see it. Remember that. Mm. You can also speak out loud positive mantras and reaffirmations. This will help to direct your context and focus. A couple of mantras that you could use are, I am safe, I am loved, everything is temporary. This is all temporary and it's going to end. I've got this. This is all here for me. Remember that you can ask for help. This is so important. You can ask for help from your facilitator or trip sitter or call a friend. If you feel as though you have no one, 
post in the Have A Good Trip Telegram channel and the community or myself will support you. Here's another idea, maybe radical. You could just allow yourself to experience it. <laughs> Our minds go straight to the worst case scenario often. I'm going to die. And this is the same thing that happens in your life when you feel uncomfortable. And often we always just want to change out of this discomfort and we want to run away from it and not sit in it. Facing your fear of death and the discomfort with psilocybin is a scary yet liberating experience. Often underneath most challenging experiences, at least from my uh, experience watching others and supporting others and myself is another layer of the fear of death. And to fear death is to fear life. Death is an inevitability of living. Just a reminder that there is no known overdosable level of psilocybin. So it's extremely likely that you are actually very safe, even whilst you're experiencing this fear, this overwhelm and this confusion that's happening in your trip. The dissolution of the ego and all illusions can be a brutal thing to experience, yet it's so liberating at the same time. When you're in these challenging moments, your body is repatterning the ability to hold and experience the emotions and sensation that you didn't feel safe or know how to experience in your past. Perhaps it was when a traumatic experience happened. It's unwinding part of you that is acting from fear, wanting to run away from the present moment, wanting to run away from the experience that you're having, wanting to resist what's coming up. And it's rewiring a new neural pathway of love, freedom, and possibility. In conclusion, while a bad trip can be challenging, it's not an inevitable outcome of a psilocybin journey. And the experience is only and always defined by you, your context, and your willingness to allow the entire experience to be what it is, just like life. Remember, what happens in ceremony is meant to happen in ceremony. We often expect life to be different to what it is. And our resistance is the thing that creates a lack of peace and fulfillment in our experience. It's our lack of acceptance for the present moment. It's our ego desire wanting for something other than the present moment experience. By understanding the possibilities of a journey, preparing thoroughly and implementing strategies to navigate challenging moments, you can embark on your journey with confidence and maximize the potential for a positive and transformative experience. Stay curious, stay safe, and continue your exploration of self-discovery. 